Hello, everyone. Thank you for your uh, for your attendance. Uh, I'm Xiao Tianhan. I'm from uh, Texas University. I'm going to present my paper called, named uh, "Geometric Graph Represent Representation Learning Why Maximizing the Rate Reduction." Uh, this paper, uh, the authors of this paper are Xiao Tianhan, Zhi Mengjiang from Texas A&M University and uh, Professor Ning Hao Liu from University of Georgia, and the daughter, daughter Qing Quan from LinkedIn, and the Professor Jun Dongli from University of Virginia, and uh, Xia Hu from Rice University. Uh, next, uh, I will present my paper. Uh, the overview of my paper, I will first uh, present the motivation of our paper, and uh, then I will briefly introduce the preliminary of our paper, uh, which is called coding rate. And then I will uh, introduce our methodology in detail in the, third, uh, in the third part. And then I will briefly introduce our experimental results. Uh, first, I will briefly introduce the background and uh, some uh, technology of uh, graph repetition learning. Uh, uh, the graph representation learning is to map the non euclidean graph data to low dimension vector, uh, which is uh, which is easy for downstream task, uh, like uh, for recommended system of other tasks. And uh, and the, in the past few years, there is two mainstream method. The first one is a random work based method. It's uh, the representative method. Uh, deep work and a node vector. And their key mathematical expression is uh, listed in this slide. And another, another technique called uh, contractive learning for graph representation learning uh, are recent works. And uh, the representative uh, method are GRIS and uh, graph constructive learning. Also, also there is also a, a another, uh, uh, other many uh, many works, random work based method and the contractive learning method, but their key mathematical expression are listed in this slide. Uh, look at the red part. The key idea of the previous method are to model the similarity of the connecting node. They just uh, push the low dimensional vector to be the similar and then use some loss function to push the similarity of the connecting node. So if, you, if, the, method, if the key idea is to model the similarity between the connecting node, uh, then uh, look at some example here. If we have a toy example, toy graph, if we get a repetition look like this, we can say, in the whole representation space, uh, uh, the, the representation, the node representation only have a very small area. So such node representations uh, has less diversity of node representation as a whole because it's only span a very small area in the whole representation space. And, uh, and if, we, if we get an embedding like this, uh, Although, although the whole node representation span the whole representation space, but uh, within the groups, uh, the, the node representation has less diversity uh, because they have overlap together. So we argue that the previous method encouraged, uh, only encouraged the local similarity between connected node, but uh, it could fail to capture the global distribution of the nodes of the node representation. So we want to get a representation like this. Uh, the whole representation is diverse. It can span the whole representation space. Uh, and uh, within the groups, uh, the node representation should also span uh, as large as the area. Uh, so the ideal, the ideal node repetition should be in a geometrically good repetition space. So 
based on this idea in this paper, we propose a geometric graph representation learning. Uh, we first present the following desired properties for node repetition. The first one is the whole, uh, the whole node repetition should be diverse. And the second is uh, the node representation within groups should be similar, but uh, they also should suspend their own subspace. This is the basic idea. Uh, the, the figure show the basic idea of our, our method. It's maps node in uh, different group in different subspace. Uh, look at this figure. We have graph and we use a graph neural network to transform the graph to node embedding. And then we design a loss function, uh, uh, which uses read reduction technique. Uh, this loss function can push the embedding to a uh, different space, uh, can push the node in different group to different space. Uh, the different color in this figure show the different node in different uh, groups. We can see the red one will be pushed in, uh, will be pushed at the z axis. The a, the z the axis here is a subspace in the 3D space. And uh, as also the green one is, is mapped, mapped to the X axis and the, the blue one is mapped to the Y axis. And the X, Y, Z here is a different space. Uh, I will briefly introduce the technique we will use in the loss function, uh, coding rate. Uh, uh, suppose we have a bunch of data representation W here, and uh, we use a coding rate to donate the, na the neighbor or the base need to encode the data. Uh, the mathematical uh, uh, rep uh, expre expression is listed in, in the equation. Actually, the, the RW here is a measurement for the vo volume of W. Uh, you can just understand it as uh, information measurement of W. It can measurement the information hide in the whole embedding. If the information is more than the RW here, the coding rate will be larger. And uh, if the coding rate is smaller, it means the embedding will have uh, less information and its volume is small. So we, based on the coding rate, we design uh, coding rate for graphs. Uh, as, as, as we mentioned before, first, uh, we need to make the whole representation be diverse. So, uh, so we need to compute the coding rate for the whole representation. Uh, we use a graph neural network as a backbone to transform the graph to Repetition Z, and then we use coding rate to estimate the number of bit for represented T. Uh, the equation is RG. If we get if we get a larger RG here, it means uh, the representation has more bits to be represented. It also means there is more information in that representation. So if we get a larger RG, we will get a diverse representation. And, uh, and as we mentioned before, the second one, uh, the node representation within groups should be similar, but span their own sub subspace. So in this way, we also compute the coding rate for a node group. If we, if we make the information, uh, information uh, of the of this of this group to be smaller then we will be pushed the uh, node representation within group to be similar because they will contain less information so based on this idea for uh, we can we regard uh, uh, the one, the neighbors of one node as a group so for one node i, we compute the average coding rate for, for its neighbors as follow, uh, which is shown in equation three. 
And uh, for all node, we compute for all node, we compute the average coding rate for the whole graph. We regard uh, uh, the neighbors of each node as a group and uh, compute the average coding rate. So if we get a smaller RCG here, actually it's a coding rate for a node groups we will have a less bit in the representation. And uh, if we make uh, the RG here smaller, we will get a similar representation within groups. So, so after we compute the coding rate for the whole node representation and uh, for the node groups uh, to enforce the diverse node representation space and the more similar representation for the connect node we propose to maximize the following objective function, uh, the delta IG here. Uh, for, the, for the red part, we want to maximize this, uh, the red part. Once we maximize this part, we will get a larger coding rate for the uh, node representation as a whole, and we will get a diverse node representation space. And uh, for the for the blue part, uh, because we want to maximize the whole loss function and uh, consider the minus uh, before, before this term, uh, we will minimize this term. So once we minimize the term, we will mini minimize the information hide in the node representation within groups. And, uh, and the, the, the Z here, the node representation Z, is uh, transformed by a graph neural network and the, uh, the parameters of the graph neural network will be optimized by the uh, following uh, objective functions. So in this, uh, in this paper, we also provide some uh, theoretical analysis for the objective functions. Uh, consider the principal angle between the subspace and the decomposition of the adjacency matrix, the coding rate will take the following exam and the detailed uh, derivative will be found in our paper. I, I do not present here. And uh, we will only focus on the second term, uh, beta here. The beta here is the principal angle of the different subspace. Uh, you can just regard as the principal angle as the difference of subspace. Once may we maximize this loss function, we will maximize the principal angle of different subspace. And uh, if the principal angle is larger, it means the difference of uh, uh, different uh, the, the difference of subspace will be larger. And in this way, uh, we will make the node representation within groups are more uh, discriminating. We will get the following uh, two desirable properties, uh, inter-communities and the intra-communities. Uh, the inter-communities will, uh, <clears throat> will lie in different subspace and the principal angle are maximized and the intra-communities uh, the node representation will be similar. Uh, I will also present uh, uh, two kinds of uh, experiment. The first one is a verification experiment. Uh, we, we conduct on synthetic data and real data. This is the experiment with synthetic data. We first generate a synthetic, synthetic data, synthetic graph with three clusters. And we also show their adjacency matrix and the node features. And we also plot their learned node representation in figure D. Here we can see that our method can map the different node uh, in different group to different subspace. Actually from this 3D uh, realization uh, figures, we can, we can see this three, uh, these three subspaces are nearly orthogonal. And, uh, with, and uh, the 
the node repetitions in the same communities are compact. And uh, we also conduct some experiment to show that the repetition, node repetition learned by our, our model are nearly orthogonal in the real world graph. We, we, we plot some figures here and uh, we plot two class of nodes in each figures. Look at the red arrow here. We can see that the node repetition are nearly orthogonal uh, to each other in two uh, real world data set. And we also do some performance exper experiment. The first one is compared to the NCU provides method. We compare to uh, the original feature and the PCA and SVD, uh, this uh, um, metric decomposition method. And we also compare to the deep work method and uh, some contractive learning method. Uh, we first to learn the representation and uh, use, the rep use the node representation to do the node classification task. <clears throat> We can say that our model outperform all the baselines by a significant margin on all the data set we use. And I also conduct some experiment to compare to the supervised counterpart. Uh, although our method are unsupervised method, uh, we just learn the node repetition and use the node repetition to do the node classification. But when it's compared to the supervised method, uh, our proposed method can also get a good performance. Look at the average rank here. Our method are rank, uh, the average rank of our method is about three here. So, uh, so this is all my presentation. Thank you all for your attendance. Do you have uh, any questions? Yeah. Right. Uh, looks like we don't have questions. Uh, I have, I have, I have one question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I wanted to ask uh, for the unsupervised. Um, for the unsupervised experiments, yeah. uh, I noticed there was one data set that deep walk performed better than your method. Do you have any idea why? Uh, yeah, I also noticed this uh, uh, this phenomena. Actually, this method is a deep walk. Uh, the, the, the node repetition learned by deep walk and uh, combined with the original feature. This is deep walk plus F here. Uh, I think, uh, I, I think uh, you, you can say, uh, first, you can say from, the, uh, from this table, the deep work plus original figure are always get a, a better performance uh, in the baselines. So mm -hmm. this is a very strong baseline, I think. And uh, for, the compute, uh, for the computer's data set, I think uh, maybe because of the data structure, uh, the are the dom are the dominant uh, reason for the performance? Uh, you can look at uh, we on, we can we only use the deep work. It can achieve uh, about uh, uh, 80, 86 accuracy percentage. So I think uh, maybe maybe this is caused by the computer uh, data set itself. The the network structure here is very important. And uh, maybe- Yeah, I was wondering what it is about the network structure that causes it to be weird, if you had any idea. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can also look at the original feature. Uh, the, the, first, uh, the, the, the method only use the original feature. It's get a worse performance. It's on, it cannot, on, cannot get about 80 percentage yeah, here. So I think uh, this is because of the computer uh, computer data set itself. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 